Hello, Mark. Are you here? Hey, Raphael. How are you going? I'm good, and you? Good, thanks. I think we might have people joining, people starting to come in now. Um, but there, there may be, I think, the, um, uh, the second keynote's just wrapping up as well. So okay. people, people need time to move from one room to the next. Hello, Mark. <laughs> okay. Hello, hey, Natalia. Great to see you again. Good to see you, too. Guy is joining us, too. Okay, um, we are recording this. We've got people coming, uh, you know, that will be joining, and then also there'll be people watching this on um, uh, on on um, uh, on repeat. So uh, you know, on the on the download version as well. So um, it'll be so we'll get started so that those tuning in don't have to fast forward to the actual conversation. <laughs> starting point or hopefully they can edit this intro bit out um guys guys on the uh, is on the way he's got an issue where it's not connecting for him so um guy if you're listening in if you send an email to ivan at api days and um uh ivan will help get you sorted maybe they haven't uh maybe it just doesn't note that you're a member of the panel or something cool um i'm not okay. sure if guys know that he has to click on the share audio and video for him to appear here with us. Okay, great. Is he listening to me? I think, I think he's right. Uh, yeah, he seems to, he's in the, he's in the chat room. So, um, yeah. so yeah, so there should be, there is that share for me, it came up in the middle, but for at other times it's been in the top right hand corner, isn't it? Sorry, oh, I here he is. That completely. <laughs> Yeah, it just didn't, it wasn't obvious to me. Yes. No, it, it is not. <laughs> Wonderful. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Great. Great to have you all here. Welcome to our session. Um, so we'll be talking about open finance and the, uh, the limitless opportunities. Um, the future exactly. is open. The, so do we, to start, let's go around and let's all just do a quick introduction. Um, maybe if we, so maybe Raphael and Guy first so that we can, finish with Natalia and you can give us a description of how you're seeing all the work that you've been doing. I know you're, you're, you're talking to um, people in the open banking and open finance world quite a lot. So we might start with a quick introduction from Raphael and Guy and then hear from you, Natalia, about where you see things unfolding at the moment. So Raphael, just on mute. So maybe Guy, if you want to start. Yeah. Here he is. Yes. Oh, no, here he is. Okay, great. Yes, yes. Okay, I hear you now. Uh, yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, well, I'm a, actually a I'm a head of solutions here in St. Cedium. And uh, my role here is help the companies to be open to starting projects for open finance in general and uh, understand their the needs and design a, a, a solution in order to this to this domain to this subject and guy thanks Raphael. guy what's your role okay i'm um uh, dig the digital architect in europe i work in berlin so i'm working with the sales team to sell help sell the product so we'll basically work in pre-sales producing material for and doing uh, organizing demonstrations and uh, matching product our product features to the business requirements um, in Europe. I worked in Berlin for three, nearly four years. Prior to that, I'm from Australia, I'm working in finance sector in Australia in, for banks and various other organizations. Um, yeah, 
I work, um, before working for Sincedia, I worked for a, a large insurance company in Germany with a digital transformation program. Um, and I've also worked for a crypto fintech bank in Berlin, which is quite fun. <laughs> Okay, cool. And so great, we might come back to what you're seeing from that pre-sales avenue as far as the state of readiness of some of the um, uh, some of the businesses you're talking to. But Natalia, do you want to describe your role and then also where you're seeing at the moment, where is the discussion about open banking and open finance happening? Sure. So thank you, Mark. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I'm Natalia Cruz. I'm an open finance specialist at Sensidia. And currently I help customers to uh, develop all the journey, all the open banking, open finance journey, and implement all the requirements that they have to attend. Um, so open banking in Brazil, uh, it's being regulated and the, the regulation is being developed. And by the end of the year, uh, customers will be able to share their banking information, their credit history um, through APIs with other banks and fintechs. And this is a very interesting thing because it gives, um, it is a safe channel for people uh, to do it. Um, so um, uh, this will be implemented by the end of the year and it will be very interesting for all of those clients to, to do it. And uh, the most uh, important thing for us to know is that this will only happen if people give their consent and they can stop sharing the, their data whenever they want. So this is really important too. Um, open finance, I think it's the, the main reason that we are here. Open finance is an extension of open banking and it's a, it has a larger scope. So not only banks and fintechs will be able to share, to will allow customers to share their data, but um, insurance companies, investment companies and health companies uh, will be able to, to do it too. So it's a very interesting movement. Let's talk about that point, the, um, those other businesses. So when you're working with, um, so when you're discussing the open finance opportunity, um, what are some of those use cases or the early, are there any particular sectors, I imagine e-commerce, maybe restaurants, are there particular um, uh, industry sectors that are really ready for this and looking for the opportunity and doing more than just connecting a payments functionality um, for their sort of open finance offering? Uh, yeah, uh, we have a very interesting case um, regarding to uh, Topazio Bank. Uh, they, uh, they are partner with Mercado Livre. It's a very large company uh, here in Latin America, and they provide the merchants uh, credit for uh, those, those purchases for those clients. So it's a very interesting thing that we are doing here right now. Uh, there are also other kinds of, of uh, inst financial institutions, such as credit unions. We have a very interesting case as well as Cicredi uh, started um, uh, working with open banking and they started uh, allowing startups for example to consume their information or to see a panel uh, for financial institutions and customer customers uh, information as well do you know with the tapazio case um so is that where merchants are able to show their bank transaction history as proof of their potential credit Right, like, is it being used? You were saying that that's for loans. Is is it now? See, one of the things in the past has been like it's been hard for those um, smaller merchants or newer merchants to be able to demonstrate their credit worthiness. Is the open banking? Do you see that if whether it's happening now or is that a future possibility where their account transactions um, history and their ability to pay and showing their sales volumes will that impact on their ability to? have a financing um, products in the future, for example? Sure, it will definitely impact on that. So uh, currently we are developing all the, the rules that uh, the central bank here in Brazil stand. And uh, this will uh, give those uh, smaller companies the opportunity to uh, share their data and then show that they are a very trustworthy um, customer and they will give 
they will get uh, better offers and even offers that are tailored to their behavior. So it will be very, um, very important for them to grow, to get more market share and to get um, different kinds of products as well. So I know in Brazil, you've got a situation where with open banking, I think, you know, it's a bit similar to what happened in Europe. You've got payments and accounts, uh, API functionalities have to be released first by um, by banks. But then in Brazil, like you say, um, Natalia, for the rest of this year, there's actually a whole range of future product categories as well. There's like credit cards, um, loans, information, all of that that needs to be released on like a two monthly cycle of what's available. But how do you, uh, how do you, Natalia and you, Raphael, speak to um, uh, speak to companies around? Okay, here's what's coming down the pipeline as far as regulations. So here's how to think about your architecture, the use case opportunity. Here's how to start getting yourself ready, but in a flexible enough way because you can't because some of those technical standards for those new areas of APIs haven't been defined yet. So you you want them to be ready for that opportunity in a couple of months, but mm-hmm. not locked into something if the if if at the last minute some of those specifications change or something. How do you how do you navigate that? Nice. Uh, Let me ask that. <laughs> well, Mark. Um, what do you see, as, as you said before, about the, the, the future roadmap that uh, are, we expect to include in other, other um, da- products, data, services, from, for example, from the open insurance and open health and, and things like that. There, all these open investments also, all, all of these things are on the roadmap here on, in Brazil. And, uh, well, we, uh, for the financial institutions that we are planning to build uh, this platform, this this uh, or to enter this this open finance uh, uh, mainstream in this case, uh, what we are suggesting to, to our customers and clients, we are suggesting to, to start to think how to implement that in a way that we can, uh, of course, extend this uh, this platform in order to provide this uh, the creation of the, the APIs and, and, and to be uh, compliance with the regulation. So uh, for, for the start of this point, uh, what you suggest, uh, the first thing we suggest to them is think uh, about this platform, um, starting about uh, thinking about layers, for example. Of course, in the, in, if, you, if, you, if you have a, uh, a, this kind of, of thinking, we have a layer that we uh, we have the consumer uh, uh, partner parts of this, for example, banks, e-commerce that you mentioned, and uh, third parties, and a lot of companies that are interested on the ecosystem are consuming consuming this data or services. So this is the first layer. In the other hand, the other part we have the provider layer. If you think about the layers here. Uh, of course, there are, there, there are insurance companies here, there are the investment companies, banks, and so on, that will provide the data and services. Well, uh, you know, to, to connect those parts, uh, we need to think about this uh, open finance layer, because um, also we have one third layer that we should be the regulatory layer. Because no matter if we have the, the, the open insurance or the open banking, uh, especially here in Brazil, we have a regulatory uh, uh, party that will regulate everything. So we need, we have this, uh, considering that we have these three layer, consumer layer, regulatory layer, provider layer, we need to think about this connecting layer that we are, we usually, Name that as an open finance layer. Well, uh, this open finance layer should should have some capabilities. For example, of course, APIs is the main uh, thing or the main pillar of the anything here. And uh, uh, starting with the APIs, we we should of course we we need to think the APIs in order to expose uh, APIs 
because we need to be compliant with regulation. And also, if you are if you are going beyond the regulation, we uh, we, we think this layer should consume APIs also. So, uh, of course, the API is the main thing here. Is the main point that we do, that we built. And of course, uh, APIs should be a standard because the regulatory layer will stand for, or you, you should to follow these standards. And uh, well, APIs is the first thing that we need to consider in this architecture or in this implementation. The second one that we mentioned here is about the, the, the consent services, of course, to expose data to do from one part to another part, we need to, the, the, the customer, that is the owner, of course, of the services or the or the or, or the data should consent of that. Uh, the third one uh, capability of this uh, open finance layer should be the security standards that we need to follow because uh, uh, we have uh, the regulatory parties will imply for uh, we, need to, we need to use some standards such as FAPI, such as SIBA, and things like that. Uh, the third, the fourth one is is about the connections that we need to provide to the 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 the, the legacy systems where we we'll expose the service, expose the data. So so this capability to integrate and connect to the uh, to the the legacy should be provided. And the, the last one capability that we think about in this uh, in, in this layer should be uh, the integration, of course, to the regulatory layer, because you need to expo expose some metrics, you need to, you need to expose uh, data, logs, and things like that, in order to be compliant also with the, 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 the other things that we are building here, okay? Well, uh, after that, of course, uh, how to implement this, everything that we mentioned, APIs, consent services, security, integration, and everything here. We need to think, of course, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this implementation should be faced as a platform, platform thinking, because, of course, the platform thinking, uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, inherent uh, characteristics such as architecture characteristics such as uh, extensibility, observability, uh, automation, and things like that, that we saw uh, that are a lot of uh, architecture characteristics that we, uh, this platform should follow. Uh, of course, uh, facing this as a platform, we have to need a platform team. This platform team be, uh, will be uh, responsible to uh, provide this platform to the other teams because it's a technical platform and all other teams and product teams and all areas of the institution should use this platform in order to expose regulatory or, or beyond the regulation APIs, for example. And the last one, of course, this platform have to be a product mindset because uh, we have customers, We because the customers of this platform should be the internal teams, should be also the, the external teams that we, or external parties, external uh, companies that you use these APIs. So the product mindset to treat is a, as a product to have a roadmap to give to to collect the feedback from the the, the 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 other parties should be an extension of this implementation. That's thorough. Thanks for the comprehensive approach. So then, when you talk about platform teams, how much when you're working with um, new businesses, how much do they already have the platform team in place? Or is that a um, you know a model that you're helping them reorganize? I mean, it comes back a little bit to Conway's law, doesn't it? With like the sort of uh, software that you build is going to be a reflection of your organizational structure. So, do you find that you have to encourage them to establish that platform team, or do they already have that in place? Where where that where are they at when you're working with them? Starting work, please. Yes, uh, uh, what we encourage our customers is start with uh, uh, to establish the, the platform teams, in fact, because uh, these platform teams will interact with the, uh, first of all, this platform team uh, 
have to face this platform, this product, this implementation, this all, all these things that to do the, this open finance platform, we will face this as of as a product. It's it's a normal to the the platform teams. Uh, face that as a product. So, uh, the, uh, of course, these platform teams should uh, interact with the other teams in order to collect the feedback about the this product. Uh, yeah. Also, it, it, it's, uh, the, this platform team should uh, act as, uh, um, I mean, a kind of a governance team also that will uh, expand time to 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 explain how the platform works and also these teams should be inside the other product teams such as uh, chapters spotify chapters or things like that so the um, uh, this platform teams is the what we the what we believe that will make this the the project or the initiative successful because have a now owner is the main thing is have a now owner and this owner will responsible for the evolution, for the roadmap, and all those things. It is uh, the main point that we suggest into the teams. Of course, use it and start with a, a platform teams. Fantastic, Natalia. When you're working, when you're talking with businesses that are coming on board and investigating the opportunities with open finance, how? Do, do they use word? Do they use the word platform? Do they do they say I want to be a platform? Do that, or is it, or, or are they specific thinking about a specific use case and they don't see the wider opportunities? Where where's that discussion at, or what's the level of sort of industry maturity and uh, and thinking around that? How much do you have to educate, I guess, and how much are they already will, wanting to have that discussion? Okay, so um, here in Brazil, we see that the main motivator of the open finance implementation is, in fact, the regulation. So uh, central bank central bank established that we have to do that through APIs. So uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, banks and fintechs that have the need of implementing those APIs. So they come looking for a platform to do it. So. Uh, like Rafael said, they are structuring structuring their teams to make it make it possible and to um, to learn what are the requirements, what are what are at, what is everything that they have to implement to attend their regulation. So this is the first phase. The second phase is um, uh, learning what are the opportunities that they can they they will have. Uh, once open banking is implemented. So uh, new customers, um, new offers, more client, more customers for, for their um, portfolio and for, um, for anyway. Um, and uh, I know that there are, there is a concern regarding to the security and the trust the Brazilian people, I'm not sure if this happens in other countries, I think I think it does. Uh, the trust that customers will have sharing their data. People are afraid to share their data. So uh, uh, this, is, this will be the main uh, challenge for us, that is um, telling people that APIs are a safe way to do it and they will have more opportunities if they do it and they can stop sharing at, the t at any time they want. So I think um, companies are learning a lot from open banking and um, it will be a very, very interesting thing to, to watch. It's a weird mix, that one, because there is that concern about the um, data sharing or um, exposing your data. But then when you look at something like PIX, so the instant payments by QR code, and then for that to be implemented, so then Q that is you're able to scan and pay directly from your bank account. So the, that's had huge uptake. Yeah. So there is an appetite as long as it's, and obviously people feel like that's a secure approach uh -huh. so there might so there is there is some is, is that use is that do you find that that's a useful example like saying well you know it's like making it's like picks but for um you know for, for credit opportunities or for loans opportunity you know is there any of that that's um that 
makes people more considerate, I guess, is one thing. But then also the other question would be around that consent workflow. How, like at the moment, we all sign that terms of agreements and we just scroll down and we go, yep, it's here, <laughs> and then through to where we go. How do we make that a more meaningful process as well? I think the the institutions are making very clear and the central bank too that we are um, very concerned about all the testing and all the security requir requirements being attended. So it's a very uh, mature process, a uh, testing process that the, all the companies are having are going through. Uh, so this will give more, um, this will make people trust more in the process. So phase three uh, currently being developed, it will allow people to use PIX for uh, online transactions. So through open banking, they will be able to pay, to pay the, their things with PIX. And um, it's, it's a, I think it will be a process for people to trust open banking and to start sharing their data um, in a very, um, <clears throat> Um, light way, I think. Just, 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 yeah, just, com sure. just, just completing what Natalia is saying, uh, and in, in terms of things that they are happening here in Brazil, is uh, the instant payment like Pix have great successful, huge successful here, is because the first one is so fast, because uh, using the the other traditional payment system. It's take one day, for example, to 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 make the payment or effect execute a transaction. This is the uh, point that people should uh, uh, trust in this or, or adopt this kind of uh, uh, approach so quick. And the other one is because the PIX here in Brazil is free. You have no tax, no bill for that, and it, it was a huge change. And so, of course, the people uh, uh, adopt, adopted that this payment so quick because uh, it's free and it's fast. So, of course, I will use no matter if not, not security. So this is the, the, the main part that I believe that uh, this change happened here, Brazil. So that speed is as a real uh, a driver of up of adoption, you know, and that convenience yeah. that comes with that. Um, Guy, thanks for persevering and uh, getting back on, even though you've had some internet hassles. Um, the yeah. so then just to um, bring you into the conversation before we wrap up. Um, the, what are you seeing? So we've talked about velocity being a real driver and that need for trust to be built. We've talked about like building platform teams. Where is the, the work that you're doing with in that pre-sales funnel with businesses who are just getting started in this, what are they coming to you with? Like, is it about velocity? Is it about building trust? Is it about new use cases? What's, what are the main um, issues that people reach out the phone to try to connect with you around? Well, I think um, the UK is, is much further ahead on in open banking than the rest of Europe. So I deal with with this part of Europe. So there is sort of a start off up with open banking, but I think they still need to um, adopt this standard more fully and, and realize that the business opportunity that it, it represents. Because um, as you know, this the open banking um, movement allows this data sharing with trust and then and with the, with the user base and the customers being a lot more financial literate than they were a few years ago because of the, the democratization of information through the internet. They're demanding better services and this has a positive feedback effect. So you get more and more sophisticated services and the customers demand more sophisticated services. So this presents a very big business opportunity for the banks where, because their data in that inside their systems is, um, is obviously the gold, the gold stand, the gold that they can sell. Um, However, you know, it takes a while for them. They're, they're not predisposed to share this information because they never had to do it before in the hundreds of years that they've been in existence. So it's a huge uh, change in, in the mindset for the bank. So, and they obviously, this kind of change takes a while to go through the system. Um, so the point, the moment they build these um, portals with, uh, with services on them, 
and then they ask they say well you know how do i i've got a service what do i do now how do i monetize it how do i make it work how would how do i connect it to everybody else so i can get all these benefits i keep reading about in terms of the increased profits better services etc so that's the sort of thing we're finding so they they kind of don't know how they, they can build services because they've been building services for a long time with you know your soa in the old days and that kind of, and esbs and all those things but and then they can expose them um, externally but then how do they make them part of the business strategy how do they then monetize or make make build those into use cases and i think that's still something they're they're working through and, and uh, thinking about as, on a Excellent. strategic that's a, level yeah yeah absolutely i think that's a great point to um uh unfortunately to uh leave on but um a great discussion i think it shows i mean you know congratulations to all three of you for the work that you're doing because it, it really is it's still at the start of this journey i know we hear about open banking and open finance and it's here and all of that sort of stuff but really the rubber is only just hitting the road now um and there's still that you know the, i think you've really um mapped out how people can prepare for um, you know, their, their internal organizational structure, how they can look at use cases, how they can foster that trust. So great conversation. Thanks to all three of you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your API Days conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. Bye. Okay, cheers. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Ciao.